Good evening, Sri Lanka, and welcome to ECHO, the Sustainable Development Idea. My name is Jonathan, and today we're here to bring to life what the Brundtland Report of 1987 has laid out as sustainable development initiatives, where corporates today work in such a way that the natural resources of our country and our locale are preserved for generations to come. Uh, over the past few weeks, we've had a few guests come in and, and speak about uh, the sustainable development uh, initiatives that their various companies are taking part in. And today, I'm very, very pleased and honored to have a very distinguished member of our Sri Lankan Medical uh, Council, our Sri Lankan Medical Faculty, island-wide. He's none other than Professor Lal Chandrasena, who is uh, uh, the, one of the directors of the Navaloka Group of Hospitals. He's also one of the founding members. He has a doctorate in philosophy and a bachelor in science, as he has uh, been one of the founding members of the Nawalok Group of Hospitals. So, with that said, good evening, Professor. Good evening. Welcome on the show. Thank you. Uh, Professor, we can start off with uh, sustainable development initiatives that Nawalok is doing hmm? as one of the leading hospitals in Colombo. Yes. Uh, why don't you run us through some of the programs that you guys are doing to preserve yes. waste management and to protect the, the environment from damage? Yes, right. You know, firstly, let me say that uh, an hospital, it is a, it's primarily a place for healing the sick. Yes. So, in that process, we make a significant negative impact on the sustainability of the environment. So obviously we sort of pollute the most valuable resources. Yes. And as an ethically managed institution, we have management systems to sort of mitigate these uh, negative impacts. Right. Right. So healthcare is a highly regulated industry. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. I say that because uh, we engage our activities. Whilst doing that, we have to look at the look at the good health the safety of the well-being of the patient whilst protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. So, now primarily in our activities, the hospital comes under the direct purview of the Ministry of Health. Yes. Uh, and the Director General of Health Services is the is a, is a primary authority, the ultimate, authority. ultimate authority. But, you'll be surprised to know that there are many, many authorities looking down on us, mm -hmm. like the Central Environment Authority, the UDA, the Atomic Energy Authority, then we have the NMRA, mm -hmm. the National Medicines and Regulatory Authority, mm -hmm. then we have the Consumer Services Authority, then the Private Health Sector Regulatory Council. So all these uh, authorities mm -hmm. have a, a regulatory impact of on us. So we have to comply with all their, all their requirements. So, so environmental policies, we have environmental regulations and standards to comply with. So otherwise we cannot operate the hospital. So we have environmental safety systems and occupational safety that is for the, that is for the detriment of the patient as, as well as the workers. Yes. So we have to look at the that side as well. So, as I said, air, water, and the conservation is your thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so, in the healthcare industry, you asked about the waste management. So, so water is the one that primarily pollutes. Of course. Now, there are, there are, uh, in a hospital, we have two categories of, uh, what, of treatment plant. One right. is for the sewage. Right, yes. The other one for the chemicals. Yes. Actually, the sewage cannot be put to the main sewer no. because it's, it's, a, it's a hospital. Yes. So they had to be treated first. Yes. They had to be treated first. And then there are the laboratories, mm -hmm. the laboratory chemicals, mm -hmm. there are so many like that. Those have to be separately treated mm -hmm. in, in, in a chemical plant. Mm -hmm. So the laboratory, then the laundry chemicals. Mm -hmm. you imagine 300 patients and the motor laundry that goes into it and they have to be, uh, they have to be chemically treated. Yes. All these chemicals go into so they have to be treated for all these chemicals have been treated. So there are regulations to make sure that we don't we don't pollute the water water resources, mm -hmm. waterways. So there are standards for that. Right. So they are being looked after all the time, they are being checked. Right? Then uh, 
at the same time our activities produce massive amounts of clinical waste yes i can imagine, can imagine you know when the person goes into the hospital you know through paper spill you know say like no yes and all those things go to waste our the water gets inside everything goes to waste so uh, so you have the clinical waste you have the infected waste then you have the general waste so the waste has to be segregated right so you, at the point of at the, at the point of production mm. otherwise mm. they become the dump yes. you can't separate, can't separate so they are separated at the point of of production right, right. so they are they are segregated yes. in terms of color you mm. say you have the yellow color then you have red color for the infected waste mm. then we have the regular things that can go into the into the local uh, local landfill right. to the municipal council right. so the most important thing is the is the incineration of the Mm. of the infected infected waste and uh, here of course you have to have uh, stipulated incinerate mm. very very strict control because they are they are supposed to burn your stuff yes not leaving any Residue, any residues that are toxic or harmful to the mm -hmm. environment. So uh, the incinerators are they work at uh, what 1,000 degrees centigrade. Wow. There are two chambers. They work. Otherwise, it will not completely burn. Then you will half burn, mm -hmm. and you will have toxic waste. So these. So before you install an incinerator. you have to get the permission of the central environment authority that's why i said we come under that purview straight away mm. so you get their permission mm. they will give you permission they look at the place and look at the chimney how far it goes yes over and above everything yes so think about now the hospital where it is so yes. you have to have it chimney right up right way above the others yes. i can right? imagine so all these uh, requirements you have to comply with mm. okay. then uh, you have to ensure that all your waste even the ashes Come out. They have to be disposed properly mm. through authorized agents. Right. You cannot throw it out in just because you burn. So the Central Environment Authority has a uh, has a hold mm. on the incineration of the waste. Right. right. And there is uh, then you have the other kind of waste which is uh, infected waste. Like right? there is waste like uh, let's say it's coming from uh, used cars and things like that. Yeah. from the from the child to oh, right okay. right you can see hepatitis mm -hmm. and now at this time with covid from covid patient so then you have this protective uh, kits that you use that's a ppe yes. personal protective equipment all these things they we, we can't burn them in in this incinerator right. because the temperature is not enough to to burn them completely right. so we have to hire contractors to Take them to other incinerators that can that can take up this material. So we it's a it's a highly highly sophisticated way of uh, of getting rid of our, our stuff. I can imagine. Yeah. Can imagine. So because uh, we were talking about especially the water management part, Professor. Yeah. Uh, just a quick question because as a layman here, I, I, I believe some of our viewers would have this question: Is any of the water recycled or reused or made available for? for the usage in any way shape or form afterwards in, in the hospital setup we don't i know in other industries they they clean it up and use it to use it to wash the gardens and things like but in our in, in the middle of the city mm -hmm. hospital cannot uh, take that chance but we treat it to such the extent of the, of the specifications right. that it can be put into this work right right so up to that even that's a uh, huge expenditure of course of course so yeah. like in the amount of water that we use by people So all that is, uh, we invest money mm, mm, mm. to conserve the the resources, the environment. I can yes. Imagine. Also, Professor, now I mean, with with you mentioned, I think roughly about three hundred possible uh, patients that could stay at Navalok at any one yes, point yes, of time. Yes, yes. So And I mean, uh, they won't be eating their entire plate of food. So their food wastage is also there. That is another. Yes, it has to be. You know, there are recycling methods. Yes. Yes. They, They go to farms and they are they are recycled. Right, right, right. But the uh, wastage of food is a is another thing that we need to we need to curb in this country. Of course, we are wasting a lot of food. Of 
course, of course, of course. I believe that's an island-wide yeah. problem. Yeah, something else that comes to my mind when you talk to waste is, uh, you know, now there are heavy metals. Yes. Now yes. they also contaminate. We use heavy metals. But now when you come to a, uh, you know, think of the X-rays. Yes. You know, yes. the X-ray. Now that is a silver, silver coating. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now that's now that silver. You don't you don't want to get them into the ground. Of course. Of course. Okay. So for a long time it has been. Uh, there's been a problem. How to dispose of these X-ray films that are used? Right, 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 right. So now they are coming up with uh, they are coming up with water. Uh, sorry, they are coming up with uh, 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 these paper films. Right, right. Paper uh, reports. Right, right, right. Your right. X-ray is printed on a on paper, yes, okay. paper printing, rather than the regular uh, what we are used to. Uh, Oh, X-ray film. So in time to come, we see more of uh, these things coming. I mean, paper printed X-rays. Yes. Now we have already started it now. All oh, right. Yes. That's paper printing. Right. Obviously, it will take some long time <coughs> for people to uh, you know get accepted yes, because they're used yes. to seeing these films. Yes. yes but yes. but that is the way we forward now. Yes. Okay. And if there's a pollution-free way of actually accomplishing that, I think we should always. Yes. Uh, that's a uh, way forward. Yes. 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 Go after it. And the other thing you can think of is. I mean, mercury. Mercury, yes. We use mercury in thermometers. Yes. And also the, the mercury in the blood pressure meter. Yes. Now but they are a... not being imported now with mercury. Mm. They are using uh, they are, they are using an android mm -hmm. and electronic blood pressure meters now. Right, right. And android and electronic blood pressure meters. Right. So, so that it will not contaminate the wrong water. Once the mercury contaminates the wrong water, there's no way to take it out. Yes. So even little by little, it will get yes. up. Of course, of course. So mercury is another contaminant that comes out of the, of the hospitals. So just to clarify, Professor, now when you are replacing uh, the mercury-based uh, uh, equipment with, as you said, the Android-based equipment and the electronic-based equipment, uh, the, the disposal methods of those previous uh, of the previous equipment which did contain mercury is what you are referring to yeah. when, it, when you when you talk of incinerations and things yeah. like that yes and uh, the, uh, there are I mean you can think of I mean the electronic waste you're yes. talking about now it's something like that yes you know yes. And there are a lot of medical equipment mm. that uh, they'll be discarded of course and okay. it goes into the into the market you know people buy them mm. and then finally they go to a, a junkyard. Mm, mm. So that's all waste coming from the medical. Of course. Sort of equipment. Huh? Of course, of course. Yeah. Professor, while on the topic, I mean, this just popped into my mind, and uh, forgive me if I catch you unawares here, but uh, I, I was speaking to a, a, a colleague about two years ago, and uh, they mentioned that uh, to, to help Sri Lanka with the provision of stents, especially, because we a stent in Sri Lanka after tax is close to 400,000 rupees if I'm not mistaken. So uh, to curb the costs of stents and to make it more accessible to everyone around, uh, there was this question of bringing down second-hand stents and by that, if you just uh, bear with me, by that what it means is people who've already had stents installed in them but died of other uh, uh, issues, maybe they, it was, they maybe they met with an accident, maybe they died of something else and uh, uh, their stents are still in fine working order. What they've done is they've taken those existing stents, recycled them, serviced them and they're making them available again. I know certain pharmaceutical companies are actually doing this. Uh, what's your take on that for the Sri Lankan right. market? Mm. Do you see a moral element or what are your thoughts on that? I think firstly, I think the prices has of stents have been brought down mm. by the government. I think it's running around 100,000 now. Oh, right. Okay. Thousand. Okay. Yeah, previously it was around that much. Yeah, high. Because, and also there are different types of stents, you know, drug diluting stents. But anyway, to answer your question, uh, it can be done as long as, you know, for the reasons you said, it can be taken out, it can be uh, cleaned properly, sterilized, and uh, make sure that it's working. It, is, it has a proper tension and yes. all, the, all the qualities. Yes. It can be given as the, because there are now there are modern <coughs> technology for for disinfection. Mm. Mm. And uh, I don't think there is a there is a problem in that. 
as long as people come to come to terms with it. Yes. You know, like uh, you can take the case of, I mean, it, it, you know, these different. Now, uh, when you want to place a lens mm-hmm. in your cataract, mm-hmm. there are ranges of lenses. Of course. You know, starting from thousands up to 300, uh, 500 rupees. Yes. But the pe- people prefer to use it according to their income levels. Yes. yes. But here, your there are two concerns. Mm-hmm. What's the price? The other one is whether it is safe to use. Yes. I am sure with all these new modern technologies for for disinfection mm-hmm. may not be a problem. Mm-hmm. But the regulatory authorities will have to allow that. Yes. You know, yes. as I said, the, there is a national medicine regulatory authority. Yes. That is the one that regulates this. Yes. So they will have to uh, they will call on that. Of course, of course, of course. Which brings me to my uh, next point, Doctor. Now, uh, about uh, three months ago, we had nimodipine, which was one of the drugs that uh, we were importing uh, into the country at 132 rupees a tablet. And uh, the cabinet took a decision to start producing uh, nimodipine. I think it was used for uh, brain hemorrhaging. Uh, they decided to start producing uh, nimodipine in the country. And by doing that, they're able to bring the cost down from 132 rupees to 57 rupees a tablet. Yes. So uh, we're talking of inculcating uh, local production for medicines. Um, so uh, with regards to what you just mentioned about uh, you know, the, the sustainability of medical equipment over time, I am now kind of taking the conversation into the sustainability of medical production in the country. Where do you see it uh, going uh, with Sri Lanka? Do you think it's a viable option for us? Uh, do you think it's possible? It certainly is a viable option. You are thinking about the, the, the manufacture of manufacture of drugs, yes. the local manufacture of drugs. We should have started a long time ago. Yes, we should have started a long time ago. It is we do have the expertise, mm-hmm. you know. And these processes are standardized. Mm-hmm. These are processes they have been going on for a long time. So if you get the right expertise and you have the uh, you have the capital to invest, that's the way to pay forward. You got we are spending huge amounts of money. And the other thing is, the most important point here is that when you have to import, you have to forecast. Yes. You've got to call for global tenders. Yes. It takes time. It's a long process. Yes. And then you call in and it comes all together. Mm. Then you are losing out on your expiry dates. Mm. And then you've got to store for months and months. Mm. Mm. It expires here before use. Yes. But if you have local manufacture, mm. Then you can you can time it and you can tell them yes I want so and so and such and such a time yes you know yes. that's a that's very beneficial for the government yes, yes. because government I think a huge amount of uh, 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 medicines mm. expire mm. Mm. because of, of this problem is no uh, it is a it is not bad management it is a, it's a part of the deal yes. that by the time you call for tenders ship and it comes here. And then storage, all this kind of thing. Of course, this happens. So I think it's the best way is to is for us to make our own, and we can. Now we have already started <coughs> making injectables, mm. tablets, and I think they are going forward, making other uh, other types of medicines as well, and uh, they're opening up industrial parks for that, yes. and giving them uh, concessions. That's the best way forward. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Then depending on other country, of course. I and mean, really, there are enough of raw materials in the yes. world. For making this, yes. in fact, the state manufacturing cooperation has been making this for years, but no government took a step to increase then and expand and into the private sector. Mm-hmm. Now that it's given to the private sector, they are taking on the mm-hmm. jobs. Mm-hmm. And doctor, you, uh, professor, you, you you believe that the uh, the standardisation procedure mm-hmm. is uh, puts to bed uh, you know thoughts and fears that. Uh, drugs made in Sri Lanka may be of lesser quality than that of in made in Singapore, for instance. What do you what do you think about that? See, the, they are manufactured according to GMP, right? The standards, yes. those standards are laid down. Yes. So, and they are quality tested. That is the most important thing. You must get a quality uh, certification yes. from yes. a reputed organization. Yes. That's what it is. That's yes. what we look for when we even. Even when you buy something, we look for a guarantee, you know, yes. a guarantee tells you where it is made and how much. And likewise, we have, uh, you have to, you have quality testing, quality testing laboratories. Yes. And even in a manufacturing plant, they are, they are tested from A to Z. Yes, yes. Know, from the time it's tested, uh, starts manufacturing. 
every stage it's been tested and ensures that it is up to quality so quality is a thing that uh, is a part and parcel of the industry of course of course when you should take our here the industry is quality of course now that's why we go with uh, standards organization then we had the ISO, mm, mm, ISO and then we were recently certified by KCI, that's Joint Commission International. Right, right. That's the right. international standard. Right. Now that takes care of the patient will be right from A to Z. Right. And it takes care of the environmental issues, everything, patient's rights, right. everything. Right. Waste management, it's there. It's written, written policies there. Right, right. So we need to stick to the policies right. and make sure that, you know, the thing is, Right, uh, if you you have to make entries properly, mm. that is what it is. Mm. You know, you see a patient, what you see mm. has to be has to be documented. Of course. But once the patient leaves, what you have is a document. Of course. Of course. Of course. So of course. you have to document properly, and then all documents are inspected by the inspector to ensure that you don't cut corners. Of course. Of course. Right? Of course. So so that uh, uh, it's very important to have. Uh, accreditation procedures mm. for mm. any industry. Mm. Right. Well, Professor, you mentioned a good point earlier. You said uh, uh, when it comes to having to forecast the drugs, having local people or local stakeholders on the ground manufacturing these uh, drugs in mass uh, helps our cause. That takes me to my another question that I had for you. As a stalwart, as a, as a senior of the Sri Lankan medical uh, scene, for the past, I don't know how many years, Professor, what is your take on government health care? Because I know that even with government health care uh, and the government uh, uh, hospitals, they have to also be uh, booking in drugs for an entire population of people. And uh, sometimes those medicines can go into ex expiration and things like that. So uh, what's up with our government uh, health care system right now? Do you think we are doing well? Do you think there's room for improvement? Do you, do you have any uh, uh, things to add to how, as to how we can improve the current scenario? Mm -hmm. Big question. It's controversial. But anyway, I, <laughs> you know, in Sri Lanka, it's a, it's a very fast state. Education, health care, it's free. Yes. So the government is providing billions and billions of rupees for yes. our health care. Yes. No matter any government. And is that distributed to everybody in a proper way? Now, the, the government has to has to provide mm. for everybody, for our 20 million people. So they will they will get the requirements for everyone, mm. irrespective. The poorest of the poor and the richest. Mm. You can walk into a government hospital and get the best treatment. Yes. The best of neurosurgeons can be had by the poorest and the richest. And so we are providing a, a service to everybody with this with our, of a of welfare state. Mm. So there is unequal distribution sometimes. So you see people uh, waiting for hours and hours in outpatient departments, right? And on so, lists yes. for various operations and things waiting like that. Waiting for days and days. Yeah. So I think the best way for this is to uh, to have some insurance schemes, health insurance schemes. If you can have a health insurance scheme. Then you will cater to the person who is really in need, yes. right? And and to ensure it, you know, if you have an insurance scheme, what it will do is the person who will need the health care mm. will be given an insurance policy for a certain amount. Mm. Like some people will pay a small premium, and others who cannot pay, like the someone who the government will pay the premium. Mm. And for the people who uh, the rich people, mm. they can take their own policies. Mm. Right? And the government can give a rebate for their uh, in their income tax for them. Mm. So I mean that way the government will not waste the resources yes. unnecessary. Yes. So you only cater to the people who will need the health care. Yes. Yes. And that's what we need, no? Yes. Yes. Otherwise the medicine will go to waste. There are so much of it. It's going to waste. Yes. Shortages, yes. there's a lot of it. So yes. I think insurance scheme in my mind will work. Mm. But again, there are, you know how politics works, someone will come and say, right, we are taking away the free health rights of the people by asking them to pay. Mm. 
but you have to make a call somewhere. You have to make a call somewhere. Yeah, but insurance schemes you can have. Mm. I think in India, there are insurance schemes. Mm. And we have started the Suraksha scheme. I think it's mm. worked fairly well. Mm. So we can have it for farmers, insurance. I think that's a, that's a possibility. It's a possibility. Right. If somebody makes a good, uh, good stand, mm. Mm. and stand by it. Of course, of course. Because now, to uh, piggyback off your previous point, you said that Navaloka at any point of time can have up to 300 patients in the hospital. So Navaloka knows that yep. that's how many patients they're catering for. Right. But with the government uh, healthcare system, because you're looking at general hospitals across the country, there's no, uh, there's only a very rough guesstimate as to the amount of drugs and uh, resources that we have to bring down, so, which, uh, which can also lead to much waste as well. Yes. So, uh, and I mean, also once you start stockpiling on certain drugs, if there is a trend or a change in the medicines, That's exactly, yes, you yes. you are you're unable to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. With the change in technology, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. So, Professor, that that brings me to my last question for the day today. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to changing trends and when it comes to changing uh, expertise and technology of medicine, um, how are we as a country faring with regards to? education and the enhancement of our caregivers, our doctors, our nurses, how is that happening? Mm. Mind you, I'm asking you this because you f you were there when Navaloka began in its inception in the mm. 1980s mm. before you were made a, uh, the, one of the executive directors in 2003. You have been a, 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 an audience member of the Sri Lankan medical uh, garden, so to speak. So. Over the last maybe 36 years, how have you seen it fair? How have you, how have you seen it progress? What notes have you got for the future? You know, now education is a, is a investment, a mm. long investment. So the healthcare, you need human resources. Yes. Healthcare rests on human resources. Yes. A doctor cannot work without the nurses mm. and other staff around him. Likewise, we have to have the education as cornerstone in there. And uh, when Navaloka started 35, 36 years ago, we started our own nursing school to train our nurses on a three-year, uh, three-year five year. Right. So we don't drain on the resources of others. Mm. So when we started at that time, mm. so it was a hundred bed hospital. Mm. So we had to get uh, trained staff. How do we get? So we have we had to train mm. and. Of course, it was a battle to get them certified. So we went through the, the mill and then got them certified with the with, with the NITA and the private health sector regulatory authority. And so now we have produced over the years about let's say about five thousand nurses, and now they are all in circulation. Some may be working here now hospital, but we have contributed to the society, mm -hmm. trained nurses. You know, so we continue to. So that there is no, you know, backlog there. So that's in terms of nurses, and then continuing trends. Something that I can think of is uh, aging population. Mm. Now, Sri Lanka is no exception. Now, in this world, we know about I mean, twenty percent in most of the uh, affluent countries. Mm. They are telling us the twenty twenty four percent of the population of the world. 60%. Now, yeah, Sri Lanka is uh, about 12.5. It's not quite good for our region. Yes, yes, yes. So, we have to, our healthcare system will have to have this burden yes. of looking after the age the population. Age, yes. Now, yes. their requirements are very much different to yours and mine. Yes, yes. So, you now training of uh, and the caregivers yes. is another project that we have. I think the, the government had started a few years back mm -hmm. uh, to the TVEC, Tertiary and Professional Education Commission, right. and the NITA. Right. So we have established our own school, right. school for this purpose, and we are trained more than 60, more than 60 caregivers. Right. Right. Now they are trained according to MVQ standards, mm -hmm. and now they can, they are in the circulation now, now mm -hmm. they can go out. They have potential to work abroad, right? right. And they are trained to the uh, international standards. Mm. Mm. So they are. So that is another initiative we are taken mm. to make sure that in the aging population, mm. Mm. there are people to look after. Okay. An ordinary nurse is not geared for looking after you, mm. but their expertise are in a different direction. Mm. 
so it's best to train for them for a specific purpose mm. Mm. so that's another so that is yeah mm. yeah we are, we are training mm. training the staff mm. Mm. so education is a it's an investment yeah, of course the youth education in the sector then how do you view the medical profession and its progress in terms of the quality of doctors professor from 30 years ago to where you are today because i mean at the end of the day that is also development that has to be sustained for the years to come yes now uh, unlike those days now the, the medical education has also taken a, uh, a, a very progressive strain right now there are uh, there are there is post graduate uh, institute of medicine mm-hmm. it's totally is geared to for producing consultants mm-hmm. right in different specialties mm-hmm. now we have a few consultants we had in, uh, with, uh, 10 years back mm-hmm. now we got double the the more double or triple mm-hmm. so there is a continuing education mm-hmm. for in the post graduate level mm-hmm. and then there are there are training sessions people can go abroad and get get trained so that is very important for technology mm-hmm. the, the modern medicine survives on technology now those days you had to go for a major operation by right? cut your from here to there and you survive the bed until uh, the days now yeah. it's not that just like laparoscopic surgery you know the yeah. whole surgery yeah. you are out in two days yeah. yeah right so these these technologies have to be uh, have to be imported yes. you know they come to us yeah. they come to us our, our, our nearest neighbor is india yes. it just comes from there yes. so it comes very fast to our country so mm-hmm. we are our technologically very advanced mm-hmm. we do have all the all the scanners mm-hmm. now the your know, mri scanners yes. and there's the 1.5 tesla 3 tesla and we have the ct scanner mm-hmm. the 640 size mm-hmm. it's so fast you can look at the heart wow. and uh, that's what all the heart and geogram that they do for the ct ct and geogram mm-hmm. you, you can see the blocks mm-hmm. so you don't have to do angiogram mm-hmm. to see the it's a it's a 15 20 minute job mm-hmm. right and then there after you can see which way you have to go mm-hmm. so the technology is so advanced mm-hmm. that there are there are opportunities yes yeah. you have the money you can get almost most of the people that are there in singapore the people rush yeah you see them they are there and i believe with the advent of the sri lanka port city as well we're yes. going to be having so many more and more coming foreigners coming in and it's up to us to also be able to raise the standard of our medicare within the country as well for yes. those people for the invite invited investment and our locals as well so professor that's all the time we have today thank you so much for your time uh, out of your busy schedule it was a dance and a half to have the professor here before the program started he's one of the most wanted men wanted men in all of navaloka everyone from the ceo downwards was giving him a, a, a buzz so thank you so much professor for taking the thank time you. out of your day to be no, here with us you. also on behalf of all sri lankans watching this and uh, any human being for that matter thank you so much to you and your profession for especially at a time like this making sure that we are safe and protected and and treated and cared for as well ladies and gentlemen that wraps up this week's edition of echo sustainable development idea Thank you for your time. Join us again next week.